Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to troubleshoot the top seven reasons why your washing machine won't start. Stick around to the end of the video for an important washer safety tip that most people don't even know about. But before we begin, we're going to make sure the appliance is unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. Also make sure you turn off your hot and cold water supplies. The first thing to check is the power supply. Washing machines need a full 120 volts to work properly. If your washer is not starting, it might not be getting power. Whether your breaker has tripped or not, we're going to reset it and then test the wall socket with a multimeter set to volts AC. All you have to do is stick a probe into each side of the socket and check the meter. It should read 120 volts. Keep in mind that the number can fluctuate up or down by 10%. If the socket doesn't have proper voltage, then either it or the circuit breaker may need to be replaced. You also want to check the power cord. It runs from the wall socket to the washer to supply with power. Look for any cuts, bulges, or kinks that may indicate it's failed. If there's no physical damage, but you think it still might be bad, you'll have to test it. In order to test the power cord, you'll have to disconnect it from the appliance wiring harness. Once you have it disconnected, you'll have to test each side of the cord at each end. In order to see if the part can carry an electric current, we need to test it with a multimeter set to continuity. Once you have it set, touch the probes together to make sure it's working. You want to make sure that you're testing it correctly. If the cord is twisted up, you should straighten it out and look to see if there are any marking ribs on the neutral side. That will indicate which wire is which. Then touch a probe to the wall socket terminal and one to the washer end. Then test the other side the same way. If your cord has a separate ground wire, you can test that too. They should all have continuity. If not, you'll need to replace it. Next thing to check if your washer has one is the user interface control board. It's what allows you to choose the cycle and options for the load. The user interface control board takes your selections for the cycles and sends them to the main control board. If the washer is not starting, it could be that the board has failed. It's usually mounted right behind the control panel where you make your selections. If your washer won't start when you hit the start button, it could be that the button itself has broken. Depending upon who made your washer, you may be able to buy pieces separately, but in many cases it's sold as a complete assembly, so you need to replace the whole thing. If you think the button is okay, you can check to make sure that all the wiring harnesses are plugged in securely and have good connections. Then use the tech sheet to put the washer into diagnostic mode to see if you get any error codes. More than likely, if there's a problem with the board, you'll already have one. Then use the tech sheet and follow the troubleshooting steps. If you determine that the board is bad, you'll have to replace it. If you need to order a part, simply go to appliancepartspros.com and type in your model number. Find your part on the easy to read diagrams and match it to the number below. Click on the part if you want to see more pictures of the item or watch its repair video. You can also scroll down to see DIY stories from customers like you or ask a question in the Q&A section. Once you're ready, you can add the part to your cart. It's that easy. Most orders will arrive within two business days. Now we need to look at the main control board if your washer has one. It controls the functions of the washer after you make your selections. The main control board receives the input from the washer interface control board and collects information from sensors, switches, and other controls. It times and initiates the cycles and monitors the functions of the washer. If your washer is not starting, it could be that the board has failed. Depending upon your model, the control board may be mounted on the control panel itself or under the washer top. If the user interface lights up in response to your inputs, but the washer won't start, it could be that the main control board has failed. Same as the user interface, you want to check and make sure that all the wiring harnesses are plugged in securely. If you don't already have an error code displayed, you'll have to use the text sheet to put the washer into diagnostic mode and follow the troubleshooting steps. If the main control board has failed, it'll have to be replaced. Next thing to check is the timer. It controls the functions of the washer. The timer is a set of contacts operated by one or more cams and driven by the timer motor. If your washer doesn't start, it's possible that the contacts inside have failed and power is not being sent to the washer. It's usually located inside the control panel. There are many different timers out there, so you'll have to consult your wiring diagram to see which terminals to test. In order to test it, 
you'll have to turn the timer so that it's in the start of a cycle and pull the knob out. Then you're going to have to check the timer wiring harness to determine which terminals on the timer those wires plug into. In our case, it's the black and purple wires. Then check the terminals with a multimeter for continuity. If you don't get a reading, then the timer is bad and it needs to be replaced. Now we're going to check the door latch assembly. It's a safety device that tells the washer if the door is closed and locks it during the cycle. There are many different styles of door latch assemblies. If it fails, the washer control board won't get the signal from the latch that the door is closed and locked, so it will think the door is open and it won't start the washer. If you have a washer that has a diagnostic mode, after several tries, the washer will display an error code indicating it's failed. On front loaders, the assembly is located behind the front panel, and on top loaders, it's located on the top. Before you open up the machine, first take a look at the door strike just to make sure it's not damaged. If your washer is not starting and is giving you an error code, you'll have to get the tech sheet, find your code, and follow its troubleshooting steps. If there's no code, but you still suspect the latch has failed, you'll have to use the tech sheet or wiring diagram to figure out how to check it on your specific model. As always guys, hit those like and subscribe buttons now to help support us making more of these videos. Next thing to look at is the start capacitor. It gives the motor an extra boost of electricity to help it start. The start capacitor is a device that stores electricity and releases it when the washer motor needs to start, giving it extra power and torque to help get it started. If it's failed, when you start the cycle, you may hear the motor hum as it tries to start, but it doesn't have enough electricity to get going. Depending upon your washer, it might be mounted on the back wall or down by the motor. If the capacitor shows any signs of bulging or damage, you should replace it. If not, you can test it with a multimeter. We're going to take the capacitor out so it's easier to show you. But if you can discharge it and test it inside the washer, you can. So set your meter to ohms. Our meter automatically detects whatever ohms reading is coming in, but you may need to set your meter up to read at least 1,000 ohms of resistance. Before testing, we need to discharge the capacitor, remove the wires, and using an insulated screwdriver, lay the shaft across the terminals. Be careful not to touch the metal part of the screwdriver as you do this. Then touch a probe to each terminal. The ohms reading should go up and then drop back down. Then reverse the probes and test it again it should do the same thing. If the reading doesn't change for either one, the capacitor has failed. If you have a metal capacitor, you'll also need to check to see if it's shorted to the casing. So touch a probe to one of the terminals and the other one to the casing. Then move the probe to the other terminal. If you get a reading for either one, that means the capacitor is shorted out. If any of the tests fail, then the capacitor is bad and needs to be replaced. Last thing to check is the drive motor. It converts electrical energy into mechanical energy to drive the washer. There are many styles of motors, but they all work the same. Some use a belt and a pulley system. Others use a direct drive motor to drive the tub. If your washer is not starting, it could be that the motor has failed. On top load washers, the motor is usually mounted towards the bottom of the machine. On front loaders, with a direct drive motor, it's usually mounted on the back of the tub. But if it has a belt, it will be mounted on the bottom of the tub. If you've already checked the capacitor and determined that it's good, but you still hear a humming sound when the motor tries to start, it's likely that the motor has failed. But first you want to make sure that nothing is jamming up the motor, such as a blockage in the drain pump or a locked up transmission. On top load washers, you may have to remove the belt or motor to turn the transmission to make sure it's not locked up. While you have the motor free, check to see that it's not jammed. Also, check to make sure the pump isn't blocked. On front loaders with a belt, you can take the belt off to see if the tub and motor spin. And on direct drive front loaders, turn the rotor to make sure it spins freely. If the motor, tub, or pump are not physically jammed up, then you'll have to test the motor to see if there's an electrical problem. Because there are so many different types of motors out there, you'll have to get your tech sheet or wiring diagram and follow the troubleshooting steps. Now here's that safety tip we promised you earlier. Washing machine fill hose inspection is often overlooked by most people. If your fill hose bursts, it can cause severe water damage to your home. A fill hose can flood your home with up to 500 gallons of water per hour, so it's important to inspect them regularly. Make sure to check the entire hose for any signs of bulging or leaking. Also make sure the fittings aren't corroded. 
Then shut off the water and look at the washers and screens inside. If they're clogged, you can just clean them out, but if they're rusted or damaged, you'll need to replace them. When you reinstall them or put new ones on, make sure the hose fittings on each end are tight so you don't get any leaks. There are many different types of hoses. The most common ones are rubber or braided stainless steel. Rubber is the most common type of hose, but if you want extra burst protection because of where the washer is installed, it's recommended that you upgrade to the stainless steel type. Some of the newer systems even have an auto shut off feature that shuts the water off if a leak or change in pressure is detected. Regardless of the hose type or the warranty it has, it's important to check them at least one to two times a year because they can fail at any time. Once you take care of the problem, you can plug the appliance in, turn the water back on, and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another troubleshooting video brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons now, and if you have any questions or want to share how your repair went, leave a comment down below.